And Jimmy the Fish forgot to strap himself in. He almost wound up sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> High stakes poker. Exciting enough, you'd think, with the amount of greenbacks on the line. But not for these good old boys. The way they play, the winner is the last man sitting. If you sit there at the table and don't move, you win the money. This may not sound so stupid, but look who else wants to play. That's 2,000 pounds of horns and hair running around the arena, wanting to hit anything in its path. It's what they call bull poker. Since he's been hit once, he's supposed to fold and walk. But why let a little love nudge stop him when he's got a winning hand? Better get your hand off it, mate. This bull has already picked its favorite. Definitely didn't like my outfit. Why? He doesn't look any more stupid than anyone else at the table. OK, OK, so now he does. It's like the song says, there's a time to count your money and a time to run like hell. It was probably not the smartest thing to do. Bull poker is obviously a great sport if you're not playing with a full deck. But after being gouged 50, 12 times in one afternoon, this guy's had enough. I'm retired from bull poker forever. If it is a sport, it's a stupid sport. The bull always wins. That's right, partner. It's definitely time to grow up and move on. Yep, I really did say that. <laughs> this is the imposing Welland Canal, the commercial waterway that runs immutably between the US and Canadian borders. The captain of the good ship, Windock, doesn't expect anything to break up yet another dull, uneventful trip. Except maybe a 5,000-ton drawbridge. Hmm, I don't think that was supposed to happen. The genius operating the elevated bridge slices through the ship's wheelhouse and smokestack like, well, like a bridge going through a ship. The ship's crew escapes with seconds to spare, just in time for the bridge operator to notice that everything isn't quite tickety-boo. He raises the bridge, relieved the worst is over. Or is it? Flaming oil pours from the ruptured fuel tanks onto the deck, and now 44,000 tons of wheat in the belly of the ship catches fire. These are the most expensive cornflakes in the world. Around six million quid's worth. That's more than I make in a fortnight. Seems the operator didn't make the connection between heavy machinery and a 5,000 ton drawbridge. A symphony in chaos, conducted by a pillwit. Not that we endorse that kind of stupidity. We're far too responsible for that. Meanwhile, down under where it hurts, Australian police have come across a driver whose car is overheated. And so has his brain. A rare chance to see a classic Australiana Strongosaurus out of captivity. Move away from the car so we can find more heavy dunce. Under the hood, the coppers find a tent, a fire extinguisher, a propane canister, and a bottle of motor oil. And anxious not to be a waste of space, he decided to blow himself up. Uh, it's disgraceful how anybody can store rubber materials and flammable materials and gas bottles in the engine bay. It's just beyond belief. This wombat's not fit to lick Kylie's flip-flops. And what would Rolf say? <laughs> In Key Largo, Florida, two scuffers grill a suspected drunk driver. It's not a multiple choice. Just walk the line, you burk. But before he walks the walk, Jack the lad has something he wants to say. Hi, Mom. Then ever so carefully, he minces his way down the yellow line. So far, so good. It looks like he'll be sleeping in his own bed tonight, and that's worth a victory jig. He's so sure the troopers think he's sober, he jumps for joy. 
stupid boy. Now he'll be lying down all night in a cell underneath another bigger prisoner. The moral of the story, don't drink and drive. And if you're this guy, don't drink and dive either. Action! This is the cat from Red Dwarf, Danny John Jules. We need to succeed in this transaction. Back in the 80s, there was money to burn. And that's what they should have done with this dreadful video. It's a hit with a capital S. Looks like the ragamuppet can't see the forest for the trees. And now, just like his music, he's in crucial condition. Baseball, America's contribution to long and boring ball games. As incomprehensible to us as irony is to a yank. Suffice to say, at this game in Colorado, the batsman is hoping to end a dry spell. Result! So where's the groundsman? Hiding behind the hedges with his hose in his hand? Now nah, the lazy dot is at home with the key to the sprinkler's timing system in his pants. What's he got to say for himself? I had neglected to cancel out the 9 p.m. start time on the controller. So 9 o'clock at night rolled around and the number one valve came on. It took him a leisurely 30 minutes to get to the stadium, by which time the home side got its proverbials together and trounced the visitors. So the groundsman was a pain in the grass for the opposition. I'm sure they were probably looking for anything that would have given them an edge. And, uh, and, and the ground crew came through that night. It's called unfair, just like holding a World Series where no other countries are invited to play. This bloke has broken into a clothing warehouse, but before he steals any of the keks, he peels off his own. What's his game then? Next thing, he's airing his grievances in front of an industrial strength ceiling fan. Better not get too close, airhead. Time for the hard graft of villainy, but a jiffy later, and he's already knackered. So he gets his kit off and cools down again, blissfully unaware of the security cam. And there's the rub, crime busters. He's been there for so long that the police could have walked there from Poland. Better add indecent exposure to his form. Here's a real professional. Professional div, that is. The floater in the boater is actually a newsman, trying to finish a television report about fireworks safety. So, ignoring every safety rule in the book, he tapes his report. More about the fireworks business tomorrow night as we salute a safe and sane fourth in part two. He's not too pleased with this take, and as he reckons this report is Pulitzer Prize material, he decides to shoot it again and up the ante on the gunpowder. He lights the fuse, and here comes the money shot. The reporter's hair turned white after the experience. OK, 15 years after. If uh, he'd uh, <laughs> safety first, I would be back, all oh, about 10 or 15 feet away, and I'd probably be wearing goggles. Or an aluminium tinfoil hat. That's the closest this hack ever got to a war zone. Jeez. Here's something you don't see often, a children's show host taking off his pants on live TV. Send in the clowns, send in the police more like. But it all started when our host met a very special guest. This is Slam. Slam's a bull snake. But this snake charmer is strictly amateur night, and somehow she lets her reptile slip into Willie's pants. What, we wonder, was the attraction? I assume, assume that it was looking for a cooler, darker place to get into, and right, Willie, I was it. Is. So what was running through the painted fool's mind? I was hoping it didn't get into the shorts. <laughs> Ever the clown, he tries to smile while the 12-foot snake wriggles around his unmentionable. <laughs> so it's down trues, and out comes 12 foot of reptile. And only one question for the dozy snake charmer, what did your last serpent die of? 
after the break. A poltergeist, an alien within, or just fluffy? It's not the elephant who'll never forget this moment. Plus, a BMX biker ramps up the stupidity to a higher plane. Again, I'm Tommy Vance, back with more heartbreaking examples of record-breaking dumbness. It's a sentimental moment. Well, it's mental anyway. <laughs> Flush Fernandez, hey hey, is a BMX bandit, and his name indicates where his skills are about to get him. Down the toilet. Here on a fateful Southern California afternoon, Flush is hoping that a homemade ramp will launch him into the record books. I personally build my own ramps, and uh, this one was, I know, the right one to get up on that. After at least a weekend of meticulous planning, Flush hopes to jump onto the roof of this apartment building. Here the bus, the big one, show him what's up. Word up, Holmes. First, he takes a couple of practice passes, and now everything is looking pucker for the big jump. But Flush decides it's all looking too easy. How about tying a rope to the back of his buddy's van to make things more interesting? That's interesting as in stupid. It's death or glory time for old Flush as the van speeds down the street. Set the coordinates for the heart of the sun. Bish, bosh, crash, bang, wallop. First thing I know, I'm in the air. Next thing I know, I'm slamming in the side of the building. And plunging headfirst into a large cactus. Mmm, prickly. Remarkably, he walks, and nothing's broken. How could this brilliant plan have failed? I had no preparations. I just do the most outrageous stunts that anybody's ever seen in their life. To see how this miserable stunt looked from the Flushmeister's point of view, let's check out the helmet cam. That's enough time inside that lad's head, thank you. So what do we learn? Absolutely nothing. I swear that I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it by this summer. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the wilds of Arizona, they're shooting a commercial for a car dealer, featuring a real-life family. How modern. My dad bought this car from Don Sanderson Ford 30 years ago. David Kimberly worked on the lube rack then. My daughter just bought this new Taurus. Come on, babes. Just do it the way we Not showed you. Look. Us. Where do they find these people? It looks like this Bobby Socks bimbo doesn't take direction well. At least when it comes to forward and reverse. <laughs> Sisters Terry and Suzanne believe an intruder has entered their home. And they're extremely frightening. Uh, frightened. The Twisted Sisters prepare for battle. I need my helmet and my shield on. Terry's husband chooses to remain bravely behind the camera while they corner the suspect in the Kazi. But do they have the bottle to look their intruder in the eye? It's a baby bird. Holy When it's flipping around and flying around, it was like it was a huge pterodactyl or something coming after him. Thought it was gonna get me. <laughs> but the girls don't brick it yet. They reckon they can catch no, Tweety Bird no, themselves. I don't know. Okay, Plan B: call the fire department. They had him out in no time at all. Really, we'd done all the hard work. To look back at it now, we looked really, really silly. Her husband doesn't exactly come out looking like a green beret, a brown beret, perhaps. <laughs> We cross now to a Western-style wedding. The only thing missing is the shotgun. It all goes off without a hitch. Soon they'll be riding off into the sunset together. But the groom forgot to tell his new bride not to wear stilettos. She accidentally digs her heels into the horse's belly, and it's out of there like a robber's dog. Not a good day to get dumped. 
Fortunately, romance fans, her puffy meringue wedding dress took the brunt of the fall. But she let Tex Pistol know that if he tried this stunt again, there'd be no horsing around on their honeymoon. This chap has always dreamed of swimming with stingrays. Instead of a career in broadcasting, he dives in the deep end, bringing along a packed lunch of goldfish grub. He's A-OK -okay with the rays until he runs out of fish fancies and this straggler shows up. This is one starving stingray who isn't fussy about his diet. At least the bloke will have a funny story to tell his kids if he's still able to have any. This clever clogs reckons he's created a gizmo that stops trucks backing into pedestrians. Very confident I have done this quite a few times, and it does stop. In this demonstration, the big rig rolls closer as Mr. Science grins like a maniac. He's got nothing to fear but fear itself and a dirty great big lorry coming his way. Yes, it's right back to the old drawing board after the lorry driver gives him a ride to A&D. After an all-night bender, this joker decided to sleep it off in his car, but his anti-theft system is idiot-proof. And oh dear, he's an idiot. Yes, he's locked in his own car. The scuffers arrive when they hear his pathetic honks for help. Okay, is, is there anything in there about the locking uh, me mechanism? After studying the form, the Highway Patrol finally get a chance to put into practice what they learnt at Grand Theft Auto Night School. There's nothing for it but a spot of breaking and entering. The bloke with a hangover shimmies out, then gets ready to big it up for the media. Don't, drunk, don't drive and drink. That's about Clearly it. Clearly a deep thinker. He'd sobered up enough that the Rosas had to let him go. Besides, he'd already done his time in solitary. <laughs> During a rock concert, this local radio DJ decides to try his first ever stage dive. The shirtless show-off expects his adoring fans to catch him. But he finds out the hard way. He doesn't have any fans and the help hauls him away to a full recovery. If this peroxide plank didn't have a face for radio before, he certainly does now. We go now to the exciting world of faffing about in tights. This gymnast may not take home a gold medal. In fact, after this, he may not have a home. But showing a little skin isn't the way to sway the judges. The merry band of men in tights decide not to leave their teammate hanging and come to his rescue. But it's too late. He's already been caught with his pants down. That's what happens when you're completely trousered at the high bar. And now, a page out of the Dumber and Dumber Country Diary. When the local council vetoed this vocal yokel's building permit, he decided not to get mad, but even. I'm a real nice chap, really. But people keeps coming down the road and, and picking on me. And so he ventures forth from his farm for the first time since the pig died. <coughs> There's the council building. And here is the tractor driving man's plan to get even. Before you can say shh, he's covered the once pristine building in eight tons of manure. Now that he's left his smelly brown business card, he might as well make a follow up call. <laughs> There's just one bijou problemet. He sprayed the wrong building. Excellent mudslinging skills there, Squire. But he's totally, uh, cack when it comes to reading an address. You can see by the look on people's faces that they were wondering why, why I was there. People thought I was some kind of idiot. Because, in fact, you are some kind of idiot. 
the old Bill invites the Mudslinger to visit their HQ. And, uh, explain his movements. Finally, as we know, taking care of elephants can be a risky business. There's many ways to get injured by an elephant, um, getting stepped on or crushed. Sometimes they can swat at you with their trunks, but there's certain precautions we take as professionals. But not everyone's a pro. Exhibit A, a zoo in Mexico. While this daydreaming hombre sweeps out the elephant pen, he ignores the first rule of elephant care. Watch your back, or at least watch the elephant's back. Ah, so, this is where the sun don't shine in Mexico. Big Ears squeezes him out like a, like a, well, like a... OK, use your imagination. That's it for this edition of Dumber and Dumber. If you've enjoyed the show and feel you've learned something along the way, you must be ill in the head. Stay dumb. You know it makes no sense. Nobody looks in their mirrors more frequently than I do. I probably do. That's a good idea, isn't it? And who is the worst of the worst? We find out next in the final edition of Britain's Worst Celebrity Driver, coming up.